Yes, the snow has finally arrived. I wish it happened, but that is the way. But uh, I have uh, been regularly been asked a number of questions through Facebook, and I'm going to try and answer some of those. But uh, before that, I'm going to show you a little thing I was working on yesterday, which is a new uh, REM pod. There it is. It's a little. A little red REM pod and actually what this is this this REM pod is actually made inside a tea caddy actually and you you turn it on here and um I'm still working on connecting up these lights. And I'm still working on insulating some of the wires inside. Because when I put the antenna up, it stays on. Uh, sometimes when you're working on this circuitry, um, the wire that's connected to the antenna can disrupt the rest of the circuitry so when you put an antenna on it it can leave it staying on once it goes off once it'll stay on because um, it's producing an electronic feed but uh, you know um, how much did this cost to make it cost cost me about about 10 pounds or less do you know but uh, I'm still going to be working away at this to improve it in that and, uh, you know, bring it on our investigations and that. Increasingly we have these teams that want to uh, approach the paranormal with a low-tech approach uh, which means not using such devices which they would call gadgets and using only uh, cameras and voice recording equipment and um, you know not using spurt boxes or REM pods or, or EMF devices now I was asked why do I use them when they don't give an infinitive answer of the paranormal what well, you know the question means just because a REM pod goes off doesn't give us the answer a hundred percent that paranormal a paranormal activity set that device off unless we have responses to our questions asking us to communicate through those devices but even at that you know the the I, I had a discussion with this person online their argument is well even if they do communicate through those devices you're still not going to get an answer of who's communicating with you well my argument is even with all the devices in the world that we have at this moment in time we're not going to get definitive answers because people have been doing this for years and they're still not getting answers now the reason why I use equipment is because if there's a possibility that paranormal energy can use these devices as a tool I'm not going to be the person that's going to take that, that away from them. Yes, you know, science has not advanced as much as we'd like in paranormal research. And the reason for that is paranormal research isn't a high demand industry. You know, um, all these advances in technology are gone into consumer items 
you know, like, you know, you can get a fridge that orders your food and all of that, that kind of stuff. That's a consumer item that more people want to use because, you know, we all have houses, we all have our widescreen televisions, our interactive TVs, um, our Alexas and all that kind of technology in a consumer market. That is where the money is made. It's not made in paranormal research because our paranormal community and our paranormal science field is very small and there's more technology uh, being put into interactive toys than is put into paranormal research because more kids you know it, 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 it's about supply and demand a, a device for paranormal research isn't going to have as much customers as an interactive doll that's that's the that's the fact you know and <clears throat> this is why uh, you know these these uh, small paranormal companies equipment companies are getting everyday items and modifying them and putting it out as their products now I've I've done videos before about shitting on uh, some of these companies and I'll get into that in a minute but the reason why we're not advancing as quickly in 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 the science end of the paranormal is one a lot of the science scientists won't touch this because of the stigma the huff like uh, um, claims and you know it, the the stigma around the paranormal is actually it's getting a bit worse actually because of social medias like YouTube, uh, people uh, ghost hunters uh, going out and making a big thing out of something that isn't that huge at all. Do you know like those social medias are based around entertainment but a lot of these people that are doing these YouTube channels and these Facebook group channels you know there is there is the genuine people out there that go out and they do their paranormal investigations with no bullshit no excitement just their paranormal investigation whatever small thing they get that's ex exciting enough for them but on this grand scheme of things when you cut when it comes to youtube the customer base is based around entertainment and some of some of these paranormal channels are trying to try trying to encourage the entertainment market into this by tricking them into into entertainment and possibly edging away from the paranormal altogether into paranormal entertainment and leaving the factual stuff behind you know and that's a choice that if, if they want to do that that that's that's fine you know um and but some of us some of us have the the paranormal as our you know our main focus rather than the channel now you know with my channel you know I do paranormal content then I can do live streams where I can interact with people or if I go to an interesting place I can film that and that can be a source of entertainment but um, science are looking are possibly looking at this and say listen you know <laughs> all this stuff about you know paranormal paranormal stuff it, do, it doesn't look good when you look at it through the eyes of YouTube or social medias or stuff like that because if you look back 20 years ago we didn't have 
as much of this stigma even though even though society was different back then there was a stigma in society but scientists were less likely to to have to to be skeptical of what we're doing uh, compared to what we're doing now well, paranormal uh, communities paranormal investigators paranormal groups often have a video or a live stream and Q&A the thing is questions and answers I often see in these chats people wanting answers to questions that can't be answered and you know in all cases the investigator and none of us are experts there's no experts there's experts in sound engineering there's experts you know there may be EVP uh, sound experts there may be video experts but as a as grand scheme of things in the paranormal in the paranormal world uh, you know we don't have experts because we don't have answers none of us have but um, a couple asked me well a lady in particular asked me how do I go shopping for paranormal equipment and what paranormal equipment do I need I'm going to answer the sec second part of that question first to start off in paranormal investigating I wouldn't necessarily go mad into buying loads of equipment straight away because <coughs> each piece of that equipment you need to learn to use and you need to learn how it works and why it does what it does to, to start out paranormal investigating go to a place that has is, is is known for paranormal activity don't bring a camera don't bring equipment and just observe if there's a paranormal group in your area and, you, and, and it's, it's a public event go you know um, and if you don't have equipment in some ways it's all the better because you're not concentrating on a camera you know I often find that when I'm doing a paranormal investigating my mind is split between doing the paranormal investigation and seeing how the fa camera is working and how the camera is focusing on if you're going to a paranormal investigation without a camera you you you're your your whole your whole concentration is on the paranormal investigating. Having said that, further down the line you will probably need a camera, because in my ex experience of doing this, not a huge long time, but um, you know, I find that the first piece of equipment that is the most important thing to me is actually the camera and before I even done paranormal investigating I picked up an EVP on the camera doing an abandoned explore you know when I went to review the footage I was into the paranormal at the time but I wasn't going in tr through my channel to doing paranormal investigating because I hadn't got any equipment in there but when I went home to edit the video I had a habit from looking at TV shows actually of reviewing the evidence or reviewing the footage and that includes the sound and when I put my headphones on and I picked up this very clear EVP it put shivers down my spine and you know it was that day that I said there's something to this this is not just for entertainment for TV and that there's something real about this and I'd love to find out what it is so you know the first thing is the camera where do you get that camera well you know a lot of my the camera that I'm using now the Sony uh, the Sony uh, camcorder that I have now I bought it in Argus 
Um, you, you, my advice is, you know, a lot. Some people they 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 want to do paranormal investigating. They go straight to a paranormal, a uh, paranormal equipment store online and buy what they need. What they're actually doing, all uh, off, uh, very often, is paying more than they need to, because these paranormal companies buy these cameras from other places where you can buy them. You know, so you know I. Search around eBay for those pieces of equipment, you know. What about voice recorders? Sure, you'll have to go to uh, the Paranormal Ghost Hump com Company for that. No, you don't. Voice recorders, or they call it the EVP recorder, is a voice recorder and it's office equipment. It's sound and vision so you, you look up eBay through your sound and vision and you can get great recorders there I'll give you an example right voice recorders Office equipment and supplies, folks. Right, you've got some of these very, uh, very cheap. You know, I, I, I have, I have bought these in the beginning, and I would, I would, I would prefer to stay away from them. Um, I have had, I've had two recommendations. I actually have this one here. Um, the quality if you have if you're low on a budget do you know maybe start out, out with one of these if you want but I'm going to go straight for I'm gonna go I'm gonna go straight for the manufacturer rather than go through all of these this because you're gonna get the first page you're gonna get the 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 budget recorders if if you you know, if you if you are on on a, a very strict budget, you know you know maybe go for one of these. But I would prefer I would prefer to do my recordings on a, on a um, on a, a wave format. You know, you get wave format, you have MP3 format. Now MP3 format will compress the file and actually will will eliminate. Uh, some of the, the, the low, freq low frequencies or high frequencies that we can't hear uh, to compress the file you may lose your EVP in some of that because sometimes the low tones I'm going to go f uh, first of all T-I-S-C-A um, Tascam Pro Audio Equipment There is the Tascam DR05X. Um, I actually have the ordinary. I don't know what's the difference between the two of them. Um, they're around eighty pounds. Um, there we go. I'm gonna zoom in here. Um, the thing I find about this about this recorder is it's um, very very high quality sound recording. Um, I uh, also have seen a radio station use these brand of of recorders for doing radio interviews while they're out and about. So that is the DR05. And that is the one that I actually use. Um, you have a number of different features. I'm not going to go into all the features and that, but you know, you have you know the laces of technology there with your USB and your micro SD card <coughs> and all the rest of it. 
and it has got a very very high um, uh, bit rate of recording it's 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 pretty crisp you can hear a mouse fart with this thing and um, the other one that I'm going to um, there may be a DR07 there's a DR40 here um, prices 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 around 80 pounds 80 to 85 pounds to get a a you know a good Olympus or a good Sony or anything like that, you're gonna pay 60 quid you know I would go a little bit extra and buy one of these um uh, there's a DR40 which is a more advanced one again but you're talking about almost 150 pounds you know but you know your DR05 is, is going to do the job you know where else can we look I have the rec I have the camera in on top of my keyboard here so I, I you know zoom recorders pro audio equipment again this is another popular one here's the H1 and it's in around the same price this is 89 pounds straight away I find these are very very good but I find the other one more robust and um, this is the newer version where all the uh, buttons are on the uh, front of it the older ones had their the uh, controls on the side and note on both of these recorders in both of these recorders the microphone is outside the case of the recorder itself which will eliminate any internal noise now you know with a good quality uh, recorder with the microphone inside the uh, microphone will be shielded but you know you, you have less chance of uh, electronic interference when the microphone is outside the case there will be other brands on this one Q2 which is a nice recording one here is a, a pre-owned zoom H4 which is a little bit more advanced again you got the uh, you got the um, microphone on the outside of the piece of equipment itself right we're going to go on to EMF detectors and people think oh no you know EMF detectors only used by ghost hunters no they're not they're used by electricians they're used in the building trade they're used by especially electricians so we're going to look at EMF detectors F meters EMF meters test measure measurement and inspection equipment you know and note I'm not going through any of these comp uh, these uh, ghost hunting companies now first thing that we come up with here is a a K2 like device for 20 quid 20 pounds um, very often when it comes to EMF detectors when it comes to the K2 meter you need to be paying around 60 quid for the decent EMF detector um, this is not actually called a K2 it is a rip off of the K2 so I would not touch that one with a barge pole here it is one that I have and it is a very very cheap price it is the Memortech Mesortech and these are available in ghost hunting stores for around 20 to 30 pounds 
very often. It is £13. £13.50. And this is as good as your millimetre, which to, I have, which cost me over £100. Um, it's got temperature, it's got milligolds, it's got um, micro tesla. Um, it's got loads of little features for this for the for what it is. Uh, also, when it gets to a certain uh, certain uh, micro tesla or milligolds, I think it's around five. It will it will uh, flash. It will flash and it will it, it will let off a an alarm sound. Um, you know, I bought one of these a number of months ago, and I find it a very, very good, it did a very, very good uh, little EMF detector. It's got it. It, it takes three uh, AA batteries, and you know, it's about the size and shape of a Nokia uh, eighty two ten, the old Nokia phones. Very, very good. Uh, very, very good EMF detector and very very cheap and you know uh, it's got it's got you know the audible uh, warning sounds on it as well now we can go we could go down the range there's another one that some uh, people use 15 pounds another digital one i don't i don't have this one i don't feel i need it because i have what i need um, uh, fourteen pounds fifty, and it's got a clear digital readout as you can see there. It shows your battery level. It's got a sound. Um, it's got the H field, E field, and electromagnetic radiation tester. Little red red button there um, and you've got an average that you can use as well what's your average and what you know your fluctuations up and down um, I think that one's a 9 volt battery goes into that one here's the one it's the same it's this, this is the same this is the same meter again but you'll find that these You'll find these in ghost hunting stores. Uh, the smart sensor. It's a modern version of the old smart sensor, but um, that's twenty four, twenty four ninety nine. But if you go to the memory memory tech, it's exactly the flipping same, exactly the same. Same casing, just different color, you know. Um, but you'll find them in a, a ghost hunting store very often at a higher price. Oh, here we go. Thirteen pounds ninety ninety. Thirteen pounds ninety six for for the mem memory tech here. You know. We'll just scroll down and have a look. There's another uh, one that that some uh, paranormal investigators use, and you you there. Um, new uh, seven pounds ninety two pence for this and uh, you know people use it and it does work here we go k2 and it's a genuine k2 and it, it's saying this and it's coming from America um, if you get a K2 and you open it up and it doesn't say made in U USA and a couple of different other things um, it is most likely not a K2 but this is um, the thing is when you're looking even on looking on eBay and you see paranormal involved in the advertisement when you see ghost hunting like I said it says here uh, paranormal ghost hunting equipment K2 5520 it's probably is coming from a ghost hunting company and um, people are trying to put up the prices but to be quite honest with you I don't see genuine K2s uh, much cheaper than that 
genuine K2. I'm, I'm not convinced. Ghost Hunting Paranormal Equipment K2 2499. And I, I don't know. It says genuine. But if you you think that you bought a genuine one and you want to find out if you take off the casing and you look um, where the lights are connected um, there is a difference between the genuine one and the the um, cheap uh, knockoff one um, Trifield meter, these are the newer ones they're very expensive. They're, that's 189 quid, and that's the digital one. Um, you know, if you're starting off, you probably won't. It's it, it's probably too much. But um, you know, an interesting piece of equipment at the same time. Here we go, I have the smart sense of her for eleven pounds sixty-four pence each. You can't go better you can't go better than that actually. And that would be the same thing as the Metrotech. And that's even cheaper. So, you know. Um I think that I, I you know I've used I've been using them for a number of months and they're pretty good. There's an EMF static trigger bear, £79. That's crazy. Don't know why it's in this, but it says ghost K2 detector, ghost hunting static trigger. 79, 79 quid for a flipping teddy bear. Anyway, it's gone off the topic here. What else have we got, folks? What else have we got? It was the same EMF detector there for twenty nine ninety nine. You know, as an eBay, you know, eBay along with every other, uh, every other company, um, you know, you, you fish around for the good prices. Here we have a uh, ghost, walking ghost. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a ghost uh, hunting company. And they're probably getting that in cheap, cheaper, and they're charging thirty pounds, twenty nine ninety nine. So it pays, it pays for you to fish around yourself. Uh, this is the Ghost Meter Pro. Technology alternatives: Ghost Meter Pro, EMF sensor, four modes, ghost hunting equipment. Um, you know, uh, people I work with uh, use these, um, uh, and they use the other modes. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still skeptic of the other mode. Eighty-five pounds. Now, you know, this is an analog uh, gauge on this. Um, the downside to that is that quality isn't very good. Quality is pretty pretty awful uh, if you drop one of those um you know it's uh it will it will most likely break um at 85 pounds but they are getting very very scarce scarce and very hard to find now um walking ghosts em k2 emf meter 18 50 58 99 Um here we have walking ghost uh mel meter. I find the mel meter I have a mel meter and I don't actually use it very often, but this is the mel meter with the uh REM device attached to it. Um do you know 244 quid is an awful lot of money for what it is. 
um, when you can have um, two of those two of those devices separately and, and still pay a fraction of that money, you know, um, you can have a separate, uh, you know, um, uh, REM pod and a separate separate uh, uh, EMF detector device. Uh, and, and still pay a fraction of what one of these uh, these costs. <coughs> the build quality is very very good, but I just find them very very expensive. What they uh, for what they actually do, I find them very very bulky actually as well. And I go and I use the uh, the mem Memortech uh, rather than my Melmeter because um, the Melmeter is quite bulky. Um, I paid about hundred pounds for uh, my millimeter that that is only an, uh, an EMF detector. It doesn't have the uh, it doesn't have the REM device on, on it. Um, but you know it is a useful tool. Uh, don't get me wrong there. It you know a metal device metal device that you can walk around with. Um, here we have. A, a, a lot of things in the one package and EDI but um, you know and I would love to have one but does it justify £350 um, to me no um, you know it, it, it does your temperature um, it does your EMF it does a lot a lot of stuff you can record data um, it's got this little rubber casing on it. Um, I'm trying to zoom in here on this one. That's the device itself outside the case. Um, you know, you got you got a you got a number of different devices in one, and you got a vib vibration uh, detector on it as well. Um, but um, as I said about the last device that I can have a number of those separate devices and still pay a fraction for what you pay for this but if you've got that money to spend you know but I don't see myself buying one I wish I could but I don't think I would spend that money Oh, you got a memory tech for 35 quid. Oh, here's the uh, fucking hell. This is the one that I have. This is the millimeter I have, and it's just an ordinary millimeter with a little red light on the top of it. And that's all it is, it's an EMF detector, it's £179, you know. But, um, you know, back when I was uh, first getting equipment, I thought it was the thing to do because uh, TV shows like Ghost Adventures had, had this. I don't, I don't see this any better than the Memortech. Metatech, to be honest with you, um, and I find the Memortech just easier to have around than this bulky device does exactly the same thing, but at way, way more expensive. Um, one other EMF detector that I'm gonna just, just, I'm gonna dial in here. You know, you've got them single axis detectors, and you got and this is three axis, three feet meter. Tri feet meter. Um the the original tri feet meters, these are the newer ones. Oh 
162 they're slightly coming down on price but still quite expensive to be honest Ugh. at 162 pounds this is a this is a newer digital device um the advantages of the newer devices the screen lights up a little bit better you know you've got the digital screen and the older device didn't have a light up screen so you had to put a torch on it to, to actually read it um, and the older one was not digital that one has uh, 189 pounds but we'll go back into the search to see if we can get a, a, an original one which I have here we go a hundred and ooh, from the United States 149 pounds and 22 pence plus 53 pounds 57 postage from the United States um, but a lot of the uh, paranormal community used this device here um, a very very good very very accurate device the disadvantage there is that this readout has no light it doesn't light up so you need a you need a um, you need a torch to actually uh, keep an eye on it uh, the newer one is certainly more advanced um, this is actually the one that I have at $149 oh, which is £114 and 2 pence that's the circuitry inside which is all glued together by the looks of it it is a good device but you know um, it has is shortcomings sort of thing very very accurate reading but that one slight little disadvantage is the um, is the um, uh, no light up no light up screen but uh, very very good right I'm just gonna go for the latest thing the flashy balls so ghost hunting companies will sell those flashy balls but they will they will charge you for it so i'm looking for pet toys because that's what they were pet flashy balls flashy balls <coughs> uh, i'll go into all categories here No. They might work, you know. But they, there's the ones that... Fuck. Oh. £16.48. pence. Do you know why they're £16.48? Pence? Because they're ghost hunting motion light bulbs. Flashy paranormal equipment. The word paranormal, the word paranormal automatically puts up the price. So we're going to try and find those outside the ghost hunting sales kind of thing. There's three for uh, three for five pounds uh, eighty nine. They're not exactly the same ones, but they might do the job, you know. Five pound eighty nine for three balls. Right, we're gonna try and find the same ones as the other ones. Aha. There it is. Plastic clear pet 
dog, cat, flashy ball, creative, interactive toy. £3.79 for one ball. It's a little bit cheaper than going through the ghost hunting company, to be honest. We'll see if we can get it any cheaper. You know, this is, it pays to do your searches, you know. Oh, what did I say the other one was? Three pounds something? One pound thirty seven pence, folks. One pound thirty seven P. Uh, if you buy four or more. Four or more at one point twenty five pence each. So please do not go to a ghost hunting company looking for these balls. Cute wee cat and kitten, huh? Um because they are actually pet toys and you will get them cheaper as pet toys. The Yep. One pound thirty seven pence. Can't really go can't really go much better than that, I don't think. One let's see. Then again you could use some of these other ones as well, maybe, you know, as an experiment. But most most people in doing the paranormal uh, go for that particular uh, brand of ball where you turn it on with the little switch. The further, the further down the pages you go, the more expensive things get, so I think we're gone out of that search. There wasn't that many available of those, but, you know, as you can see there, £1.37 for a single ball. Um, it's better than, than going through a ghost hunting company to buy that. There's another one. Um, it's actually more expensive. That's... Uh, Three pounds seventy nine pence. Something that uh, order of magnitude covered a while back, but I couldn't help but notice. This. They were still selling. Actually, they've been redrawn. Here is a here is a Roberts nine nine two one. If you can get a Roberts nine nine two one, this is forty five pounds and it's hacked. Um, this 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 um, this this has been hacked. But if you uh, go to YouTube and uh, type in how to hack uh, one of those radios um, and, 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 and know how to do it, um, you could get that you could get that Roberts a lot cheaper by nine nine two one. Once it's come up, it's is 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 completely hacked. Some of the older boxes are harder to get. All I'm getting here now is this. But you know, if you if you if you're not that way inclined in in uh, in in hacking boxes and have to pay, you know, 
the Roberts are very, very good. But we're going back into the portal again where I, where I, where I, ghost box. Um, these these ones at the top. I have one of those. It's a modified cheap speaker. I have one. I don't want to talk about it. I wouldn't recommend. It. Here we go. Now, this is two hundred and seventy-five quid. I made one of these myself. And what is very interesting about this, uh, what we have here is the um, a a. Black Star amplifier, uh, they covered over the Black Star uh, logo on it and put their own logo. Spur Box Portal number 52, official limited edition by N Wood. Um, the thing is, copyright protection warning. Now this is this is this this is kind of. Uh, this is kind of uh, made, uh, this, this here has kind of maddened me because what we're, lo what we're basically all we're looking at is a Black Star amplifier which is a product by another company, two uh, pedals, uh, a reverb pedal and down here we have, down here we have, down here we have a that's the reverb pedal and you have the sound gate which is up there which is the white one the exact same one that I have bought on eBay right on eBay the Black Star amplifier is around 65 quid I bought mine for 25 quid when Maplin's closed down that is the noise gate is 13 pounds and the reverb is around 20 pounds so you know 275 quid you know it's it's I would stay away from these if I possibly could and make my own if you but you don't have to do this if you don't you want to if you, if you want to just use the spur box and that and you are in in any way on a budget you know the Roberts 9921 is a good box now the reason I went through all that is because there's so many people out there and they say what well, company is good for getting stuff and that and you know in the beginning I did go through ghost hunting companies and I got stung and sometimes I got very badly stung and I just wanted to give you a kind of a rundown on what I look for when I look for equipment and how I, I search for it, you know. So I would stay out of the I would stay out of some of these companies that are in it for big massive profit and I would stay away with from advertisement that says ghost hunting or paranormal if I possibly could. Especially when it comes to cameras and EMF detectors and stuff like that. EMF detectors, specialist tools with, electro with, with electronics and electricians. You know, uh, don't go for that ghost hunting, paranormal, shoot up the price kind of thing. So that's just a, um, a, a small rundown of um, how I get equipment. Um, people often even go to the ghost hunting companies to get night vision cameras. Just type in night vision cameras, you know, because you will get it at a, a, a you will get a much better deal buying a camera through the eBay page on cameras than you will from the ghost hunting companies. But I'm going to leave it for now, folks. I hope this may be useful to some people that are sort of starting out um, 
you know, and one of the reasons I done this because, you know, I, I started to learn where to where to find things, you know. Um, you know, uh, and search for the best deals you possibly can, you know. But um I will leave it for now folks and thank you for watching. And I hope this was helpful for somebody that's starting out doing paranormal research. See you in the next one folks.